Hello and welcome back. Well, I'm kind of excited today because we're going to learn one of the coolest and most commonly occurring techniques of all. I'm talking about swordfish. A swordfish is another fish pattern composed of base sets and cover sets, just like an X-wing, but it is the next step up in terms of power and complexity. A swordfish has three base sets and three cover sets, and it can produce up to 18 eliminations whenever you find one. So let's go over to the puzzle board and see what a swordfish looks like and how they work. A swordfish is another single digit pattern, and whatever digit you are focusing on is called the fish digit, because a swordfish is, of course, a fish. Ha ha. In any basic fish pattern, basic meaning without fins, the base sets must have at least two instances of the fish digit. Otherwise, there would be a naked single in that house and no need to look for a fish. In a basic X-Wing, because there are two base sets and two cover sets, there are always exactly two instances of the X-Wing digit or the fish digit in each of the base sets. That's the only way it can be. So that works out perfectly. But in a swordfish, where there are three base sets and three cover sets, you don't have to have three instances of the fish digit in each of the base sets. As long as you have at least two, it still functions as a fish. The cover sets can have the fish digit in all nine cells, but in the base sets, there can only be two or three. No less than two and no more than three for a basic swordfish. Here in this diagram, we have a swordfish on candidate seven. As you can see, there are three instances of candidate seven in each of the base sets, which are rows two, six, and eight. However, this would still be a swordfish if there were only two instances of candidate seven in each of those three rows, as long as the cover sets covered or contained all of them like this. As you can see, there are only two instances of candidate seven in row two, row six, and row eight, or like this. Again, there are only two instances of candidate seven in row two, six, and eight. These are all acceptable swordfish configurations with either two or three instances of the fish digit in each base set. As I mentioned earlier, the cover sets can have the fish digit in all nine cells, but there must be either two or three base candidates in each of the cover sets, or else you would have an X-wing and not a swordfish like this. If this seven were not there and this seven were not there, then you would have an X-wing here in row two and row six with these four yellow sevens. And there would be no need to find the swordfish. Understood? But first, to understand the logic behind this, let's see how a swordfish works when there are fully three instances of the fish digit in each base set that all line up perfectly, allowing the cover sets to contain them all like this. In row two, one of those three candidate sevens has to be true, right? There has to be a seven placed in row two but we don't know which one it is. So let's see what happens when we look at all three possible cases for candidate seven in row two. If the first one is true, what happens? It clears out candidate seven from the rest of the cover set in column one and leaves an X-wing on candidate seven down here. And we know that one diagonal pair of those sevens in the X-wing must be true. So case 1A is like that, and case 1B is like that. So either way, that will clear out all the candidate sevens from the other two cover sets in column four and six that are not in the yellow intersection cells. And if the second candidate seven is true, the same thing happens but this time it is column four that gets cleared out first, leaving an X-wing in the other rows and columns, allowing for these two possibilities, 
case 2a and case 2b. And as you can probably guess, if the third 7 in row 2 is true, the same thing happens again. In fact, the same thing will happen no matter which base candidate you choose to be true in any of the base sets. You see? They all leave an X-wing. When all nine yellow intersection cells contain the fish digit and any one of them gets solved, it will leave an X-wing in its wake, if you will. So one way or the other, in all cases, exactly three sevens are going to be placed in those nine yellow cells because of the swordfish pattern. That's a verity. And no matter which configuration it turns out to be, candidate seven cannot be true in any of those light blue cells, i.e. the cover sets. Capiche? Because of the restrictions placed on the base sets and how they line up with the cover sets, candidate eliminations are made possible in the cover sets in all the cells that lie outside the yellow intersection cells, just like in an X-wing. You cannot immediately eliminate any of the base candidates in the yellow cells because they create the swordfish. Six of them will eventually be false, but right now we don't know which ones are true or false. But what we do know is that all instances of the fish digit in the light blue cells here must be false and you can eliminate all of them. In a basic swordfish, there can be up to 18 eliminations because there are six cells in each of the three cover sets that lie outside the intersection cells. Now let's see what happens when there are only two instances of the fish digit in one or more of the base sets. Let's say there are only two instances of candidate seven in row two and only two in row eight. This is another variation of the swordfish. So in row two, one of those two sevens must be true. So if the first one is true, that leaves a naked single in row eight, which we can solve, and then this must be a seven over here in column six. Now the other case, if the second seven in row two is true, then that leaves an X-wing down here like we saw before. Now let's take a look at row six. If the first seven is true, that leaves a naked single in row eight and then a naked single in row two. And if the second seven in row six is true, that leaves a naked single in row two and a naked single in row eight. And if the third seven in row six is true, that leaves a naked single in row two and then a naked single in row eight. And then let's go down to row eight. And if the first seven is true, then that leaves an X-wing up here. And if the second seven is true, that leaves a naked single in row two and then a naked single in row six. And again, you can see that the result is the same. All the sevens in the light blue cells are false. X-wings are a lot easier to find because they always form a rectangle or a perfect square. But these swordfish have several various shapes, so they can be a little tricky. There are actually 34 different ways or configurations for the groups of two or three candidates to line up in a swordfish. So you have to be able to spot them no matter what shape they take. But with a little practice, I'm sure you will begin to find them on a regular basis. And of course, this also works when the three base sets are in the columns, allowing us to make eliminations in the intersecting rows. So let's see what this looks like. Here we have a swordfish on candidate three in columns three, six, and nine. Those are the base sets. So now let's take a look at column three. If the top candidate three is true, that leaves an X-wing in column six and column nine. And if the second candidate three is true, then that leaves a naked single in column six and then a naked single in column nine. And then let's take a look at column six 
If this top candidate three is true, that leaves a naked single in column three and then a naked single in column nine. And if the bottom candidate three is true, that leaves an X-wing up here, just like we saw when the base sets were in the rows. Just like with an X-wing or any fish pattern, if the base sets are in the rows, the eliminations are made in the columns. And if the base sets are in the columns, the eliminations are made in the rows. Got it? All right, let's take a look at some real examples and some real puzzles. Okay, here in this puzzle, let's take a look at candidate six. We've got the filter set for candidate six, and we can see that in row two, row four, and row nine, we have a swordfish. Now for these first few examples, I'll highlight the base sets and the cover sets, and then after that, once you get the hang of it, I'll just highlight the base candidates. But here we have the base sets are row two, four, and nine. So let's highlight those. As you can see, in row two, four, and nine, there are just two instances of candidate six in all three of those rows. Now there could be three. There can only be two or three. So you've got three parallel houses that contain either two or three instances of the fish digit. And now we must have three perpendicular houses that contain all of those candidates, and those will be the cover sets. And the cover sets here will be in column two, column six, and column seven. So let's highlight those. So now we can eliminate all other instances of candidate six from the cover sets that are not in the yellow intersection cell. So that would be here, here, let's see, here, here, and here. So there are five of them, and you can eliminate all of those candidate sixes, just like that. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. All right, let's take a look at candidate three in this puzzle, and the threes are highlighted. And the base sets here are going to be in the columns. And they're going to be in column three, column four, and column nine. And there's your swordfish. Does everybody see that? Okay, so let's highlight the base sets, which will be columns three, four, and nine. There are the base sets. And so the cover sets will be in the rows, and they will be the three rows that precisely intersect with those candidate threes. And they will be row four, row six, and row seven. So let's highlight those. So there are your cover sets in the light blue cells. And so we can eliminate all the candidate threes from the cover sets that do not lie in the yellow intersection cells. And so those would be here and here and here and here and here and here. So it looks like there are six eliminations. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? All right, let's do the next one. Okay, let's take a look at candidate five in row three, row four, and row six. And now you see there are three instances of candidate five in row four and row six, but only two in row three, and that's okay. But as we can see, because there are only two instances of candidate five in row three, one of them must be true. And of the three candidate fives in row four, one of those three must be true. And in row six, one of those three candidate fives must also be true. And the only way this can work out is that there has to be a five placed one time in each of those columns as well. And that means we can eliminate every candidate five out of the three columns because the base sets are in the rows. And so where are they? There's one here, there's one here and here, and there's one here. Is that all of them? It looks like it. One, two, three, four. There are four eliminations here. So you can eliminate all four of those candidate fives because of the swordfish configuration. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, here we have a swordfish on candidate one in column one, column six, and column eight. As you can see, there are only two instances of candidate one in those three columns. Those are the base sets. 
And then we have exactly three cover sets going through those that contain all of those yellow highlighted candidate ones. And those are row one, row three, and row five. And because the base sets are in the columns, we make the eliminations in the rows. So in row one, we have a candidate one there. In row three, we have a candidate one there and one there. And in row five, we have a candidate one right there. So there are four eliminations here and you can eliminate all four of those candidate ones. One, two, three, four. All right, let's get rid of those red colors and I'd like to show you something here. So let's see, there's one, two, three, four. Now let's take a look at those yellow highlighted ones. To begin with here, the base sets were columns one, six, and eight, okay? And they were the only candidate ones in those columns. But now that we've made the eliminations, they are also the only candidate ones in rows one, three, and five. So if you saw this, if you just came upon this configuration in a puzzle, you can look at this as a swordfish with either the base sets in the rows or the columns. And I call this a dead swordfish because there are no eliminations to be made either way. And when you see something like this, you just have to move on and look for something else, okay? Because there's nothing you can do. And I just want you to be able to recognize this as an empty pattern, i.e. a dead swordfish. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, let's take a look at candidate four in this puzzle. And we're gonna look in column two, column six, and column seven. So we can see we have three instances of candidate four in column two, but only two instances in columns six and seven. And that's just fine. That's one of the many configurations that a swordfish will take. As I said, there are 34 different shapes for these. But these are the only candidate fours in those three columns, and we've got three cover sets that go through them in rows three, row four, and row seven. So we can make eliminations in those rows because the base sets are in the columns. In row three, there are no eliminations to be made, but in row four, we have one here and here and here. And in row seven, we've got one here and here. So there are five eliminations and you can eliminate all five of those candidate fours out of the cover sets. All right, next one. All right, let's take a look at candidate three in rows two, four, and eight. So we've got two instances in row two three instances in row four, and three instances in row eight. And we've got exactly three cover sets that contain all of those yellow highlighted threes, and they are in columns one, two, and nine. So we can eliminate all candidate threes out of columns one, two, and nine that are not in the intersection cells. So it's one, two, three, four, five. There are five of them. And you can eliminate that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. All right, next one. We've got a swordfish here in columns two, five, and seven on candidate seven. And we see there are three instances of candidate seven in column two, two instances in column five, and two instances in column seven. And they line up just right to form a swordfish. So we can eliminate all candidate sevens in the intersection houses, which are the cover sets of row four, row eight, and row nine. And it looks like we've got one here in row four, and we've got one in row eight and one in row nine, and that's it. There's only three in this puzzle. So we eliminate all three of those candidate sevens like that. All right, and of course I saved the best one for last. Here we have a swordfish on candidate eight in rows two, five, and seven. And there it is. There's your swordfish. Those three rows are the base sets. And so the cover sets will be in the columns. So we can eliminate all candidate eights out of the cover sets that do not lie in the yellow intersection cells. We've got one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven eliminations. You can eliminate all seven of those candidate eights. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And don't forget there can be up to 18 eliminations with a swordfish. In this case, we had seven. All right, I think that's enough examples for today and we'll do several more in the adjunct video, which will be video 13A. The adjunct will come after we cover the finned and the sashimi swordfish in video 13. Okay, so let's go back outside and finish up. Thanks for watching. You will generally find swordfish from the beginning of a puzzle until about halfway through because as the puzzle gets partially solved and you start getting candidates cleared out, it will gradually become less and less likely that you will find a swordfish. So they should be one of the first few things you start looking for whenever you begin a new puzzle. And just like an X-wing, a swordfish can also have fins, and we will learn how to find finned and sashimi swordfish in the next video, video number 13. There will only be one adjunct video for videos 12 and 13, and that will be video number 13A, containing many additional examples of all three kinds of swordfish, along with several other insights and tips. Now I just want to remind everyone that quite often things come up in the course of the adjunct videos that were not covered in the associated main video. So I have to stress that if you want to get the absolute most out of this course, you really need to watch all the videos, including the adjuncts, in numerical order and in their entirety. And I really hope that you all take my advice on this very important point. I don't want you to miss out on anything. I'm here to help you. The next fish up after a swordfish is called a jellyfish, which has four base sets and four cover sets and can provide up to 20 eliminations at once. Jellyfish are not very easy for humans to find, but it can be done if you know what to look for. I will cover jellyfish in my advanced series, so stay tuned for that. Okay, that's it for now, and I'll see you next time. Until then, be well and be happy.